Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves for this sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption shows us to be children of light, 
Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable, the image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, Lord, for you have raised me up and have not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you have lifted up my soul from the grave, restored me to life from those who sink into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rest. Sing psalms to the Lord, you faithful ones. Give thanks to his holy name. His anger lasts a moment, his favor all through life. At night come tears, but dawn brings joy. I will praise you, Lord. For you have rescued me. Heal, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Be my helper, O Lord. You have changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, I will thank you forever. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every aspect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little 
did not have less. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come, lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with a hemorrhage for 12 years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped by only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, if I but touch his cloak, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowds and asked, who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, you see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your infliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, and the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of the commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and he said to them, why this commotion and weeping? This child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him. He entered the room where the child was. Took the child by the hand and said to her, Talaitha Kaum, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of 12, rose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this, and he said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians today, reminds us that Jesus, though he was rich, became poor that he became poor for our sake, so that by his poverty, you and I might become rich. By that, he's reminding us that Jesus Christ, the divine Son of God, who sat at his Father's right hand in the glory of heaven, freely chose to come down to earth to humble himself 
as an act of love to give himself to us for our benefit. And he gave himself to us completely and entirely when he offered us his life on the cross. And by doing so, you and I truly have been enriched. By his becoming poor, you and I have been lifted up. By his humbling himself and giving of himself, you and I have become sons and daughters of God. You and I are heirs to eternal life. In the Gospel of Mark, we see how Jesus did that in a very concrete way throughout his daily life. We hear another story of him, as he did every day, goes from village to village around the shores of the Sea of Galilee. And each of these villages, as his reputation grew, he would be pressed upon by the crowds, and he would teach them, he would feed the hungry, he would cure the sick, he would forgive sins, he would expel demons, etc., etc., etc. We're all familiar with the story, but in any case, in this particular village of Capernaum, on this particular morning, as he gets out of the boat, he's approached by Jairus, one of the synagogue officials, who's very concerned that his daughter is at home dying. And Jesus goes off with him immediately. And as he's going off on this mission to help this family and this young girl, the crowds are pressing upon him. And within that crowd, there's a woman who's been ill. We're told she's been ill for 12 years. We're told she's completely impoverished because she's used all her money going to doctors who have given her absolutely no relief from her pain. And in her faith, she reaches out and touches Jesus. And in the midst of all the crowds pressing upon him, in the midst of the fact that he's already focused on getting to this girl who is dying, he hears the cry of this suffering person. For all of our needs, Christ hears the cry of each and every person who is suffering. And he wants to ease their pain. He wants to stop the weeping. And he wants us to help him in that effort. He doesn't want us necessarily to become poor, but at the very least, he wants us to be willing to share. To share some of the resources and the blessings we have received and to share it not individually, but as a community to share it in the name of Christ as members of his church so that we can, like Christ, as he did to the young daughter of Jairus, to those who turn to Christ, to those who turn to the church, asking for their help, hear us say, arise. And they too are lifted up and enriched because of our generosity. The people in our surrounding communities reach out to Christ by reaching out to the church. And the church is able to provide her social services, second to none other than the government, through our generosity. It is through the annual Catholic appeal that we are able to support all of these good works done in the name of the church, done in the name of Jesus Christ. And as I mentioned last weekend, this weekend is indeed our in pew appeal for the annual Catholic appeal. And I'm going to ask Mike Donahue, one of your friends and neighbors, one of our parishioners who, after recently retiring from uh, the world of high finance, the bishop quickly scooped him up and hired him as the chairman of Catholic Charity. So I've asked Michael to come up and just give a little profile of all the good works that these uh, resources go to supporting. So come on up, Mike, thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, many thanks to Father Murphy for inviting me here today. I feel very blessed and honored to be speaking to all of you in our parish where we've raised our five children. But I could feel the collective groan from all of you upon hearing that a guest speaker is going to be here to make a pitch for donations. If it makes you feel any better, I've been in your position for most of my life. As Father mentioned, I had a 30-year business career before embarking on this new journey at Catholic Charities a year and a half ago. So it's my hope to tell you a little bit about the great work that we are all doing together in the community. Many people in our diocese are not aware of the work we do at Catholic Charities, so let me give you a little bit of information. Catholic Charities has been operating in Fairfield County since 1916. 
We are in our 150th year of helping the needy and the vulnerable in our community. We have an annual budget of approximately $12 million, and we operate 32 programs based mainly in the urban areas of the county, Bridgeport, Danbury, Norwalk, and Stanford. To provide these services, we need to raise over $6 million each year, and the annual Catholic appeal is very important to us in providing funding every year. We have 130 employees, and I'm blessed to have an amazing team of compassionate, hardworking, selfless colleagues. I'm very proud of my team, as every one of our programs stayed open throughout the pandemic, and many of our, with many of our employees risking their own health to provide services to people in need. We've served approximately 20,000 individuals in the past year of all races, religions, and ethnic backgrounds. When you combine the work of our agency here in Fairfield County with the work of the two other Catholic charities in the state, we are the largest private provider of social services in the state. So as Father mentioned, outside of the Connecticut state government, no one provides more so social services than Catholic charities. And we don't just serve Catholics, we serve anyone who's in need. Now that's something that all of us Catholics should celebrate and be proud of. It seems that the press and others love to take shots at the Catholic Church. So please help us spread the word. Catholic Charities is all about we Catholics working together as volunteers, mentors, advisors, and donors to do God's work and serve the most vulnerable among us. Together, we are all doing the work that Jesus asked us to do. Together, we are the hands and feet of Jesus. So what is the work that we're all doing together? The work of Catholic Charities falls into two main categories. We provide services where there are gaps or holes in the safety net for people in crisis who have immediate critical needs. Many of our food service programs and homeless outreach programs fall into this category. Secondly, we provide services for the working poor, geared to help them improve their lives and move to a life of self-sufficiency. In these programs, we provide a hand up, not a hand out. These are programs such as our behavioral health counseling programs for teens and families, our immigrant legal service programs, helping hardworking families attain green cards and put them on a path to citizenship, our room to grow preschool in Norwalk, which provides subsidized childcare and preschool for low-income working families, our services for the chronically mentally ill individuals who we help transform into productive members of our society and our financial education and budgeting programs where we make small, low-interest loans to working families with low credit scores so they can maintain employment. This year, especially due to the pandemic, we've seen skyrocketing demand for our services. COVID has been difficult for everyone, but the most vulnerable members of our community have been hit the hardest. Imagine how hard it has been for the homeless the mentally ill, the unemployed, the disabled, and homebound seniors. Let me give you one example close to home. As many of you know, Catholic Charities has run New Covenant Center in Stanford for the past 40 plus years. When the pandemic hit, we went from serving 150 meals per day to five to 700 meals per day as so many of the service workers in our community lost jobs and struggled to put food on their tables. And this is only five miles away from here in Stanford. New Covenant Center remained open every single day, seven days per week during the pandemic. In addition to serving our normal clients, we began serving clients of other nonprofits who didn't have food resources. St. Thomas More Parish has been a fantastic partner throughout the pandemic, helping our neighbors in need. In addition to the great work of the many parish volunteers who continue to prepare the monthly meal for New Covenant Center, a longtime parish ministry, many of you stepped up to prepare sandwiches 
and made meals at home with your families, which were delivered to New Covenant Center and for other Catholic Charities programs around the country. Thanks to the efforts of Father Murphy and the parish staff, you organized three food drives, collecting several truckloads of very critically needed food supplies for New Covenant Center, for Thomas Merton Center in Bridgeport, and Blessed Sacrament Parish in Bridgeport, a parish suffering from severe food insecurity. I'm so grateful for all of your generosity. Thanks to your efforts and those of many others, we've provided more than 1.5 million meals since the pandemic began at our soup kitchens, food pantries, and through our Meals on Wheels programs for homebound seniors. As we begin to emerge from the long, difficult pandemic period, there's much more work to be done. The pandemic, especially in Fairfield County, has been the great unequalizer, widening the income inequality gap that was already the largest in the U.S. Many of our hardworking clients continue to struggle to make ends meet. With the sharp rise in housing costs, imagine how difficult it is to live in Fairfield County if you're making minimum wage. In our programs, we are focused on, focused on helping our clients move from crisis and poverty towards self-sufficiency. We welcome your assistance in this effort. And while I've talked mostly about Catholic Charities today, the annual Catholic Appeal is so important to so many other critical services across our diocese. For example, the annual Catholic Appeal provides funds to support Catholic education and tuition assistance for low-income families. It helps to support and train our seminarians. It supports religious education programs for our young people. It supports and cares for our retired priests. Our priests work tirelessly to support us for so many years. We owe them a comfortable place to live in their retirement. It also supports St. Catherine's Center for Special Needs in Fairfield. And let's face it, it's been a tough year for everyone, but especially for our church, as masses were canceled for several months and attendance has been restricted. But our priests, our parishes, and diocesan personnel continued their services and incurred many expenses. Last year, during the ACA, our churches were closed. So this year, we really need your help. I'd like to leave you with one final story. It's about one bitterly cold day in January. I had the privilege of handing out winter coats to a long line of people at Thomas Merton Center in Bridgeport. There was a young mother, a young mother standing outside of the Merton Center who was approximately eight months pregnant, holding the hand of her two-year-old son. Her son was bundled up, but she was wearing a thin windbreaker jacket and shivering. You could tell she hated being in that line, but she explained that both she and her husband had lost their restaurant industry jobs and she was struggling to make ends meet. When we gave her a warm coat, gloves, hats, extra socks, she reacted like we had handed her a million dollars. And I couldn't help but think of a phrase my mother would repeat whenever we encountered someone in need. She would say, there but for the grace of God go I. Many of us are blessed to be living in such a beautiful community as Darianne but we have many vulnerable neighbors, not very far away from here, born into very difficult circumstances who really need your help at this time. So please consider a generous gift to the annual Catholic Appeal. For those of you who have already given, thank you. But please continue, help us continue the work that Jesus asks all of us to do to assist all those struggling members in our community who urgently need your help. Thank you in advance for your support. I am very grateful for your help and assistance. May God bless you and your families. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for all your hard work. It's, it's great to have parishioners like you, and it's mentioned any number of times. Um, it is, it's a blessing to be a pastor. I think someone told me today is my 10th anniversary as being pastor here. I was installed here 10 years ago. I'm not sure that's true. 
I'm not sure it's true. I, I thought I celebrated that last year, but in any case, the important thing is it's a blessing to be here because, along with many other things, you are a very generous parish with your blessings, as Michael has listed. But this is the annual Catholic World. For some reason this year, we're a little bit further down the pack than we usually are at this point, and I'm, I'm optimistic with uh, every reason that we'll, we'll, through the impu, we'll get ourselves back across the finish line where we, where we need to be. So we're gonna ask uh, one member of every family to take one of these envelopes and a pencil with you now. And even if you've already given, don't intend to give or are giving today, if you could just fill it out and, and put it in the collection basket when it comes by, that way the, the central office that does all the solicitations will say, okay, we heard from Mr. and Mrs. Smith, they've already given, or we've heard from Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you know, this year they can't afford to give or something like that. So if you could just fill out some envelope with your name and address, it'll, it'll spare you future ma ma mailing. So uh, again, it, I'll just quickly run through it and then give you some time. On the outside of the envelope, this is a place for you to put your name and your address and uh, your email. Very important that the bottom line, it says parish. This is St. Thomas More Parish, okay? So that uh, needs to go in there too so that the parish is, uh, your, your contribution is accredited to uh, our parish goal. And then over on the, um, the, the right-hand side of the outside of the envelope is uh, what your pledge is, uh, if you're giving it today, if you're going to give it in installments, um, and then uh, just indicating whether you've already given this is your pledge today or for some reason you're not able to give it this time. And then on the inside, if you're planning on making your contribution by use of the credit card, there's a place to put your credit card information and then on the top of the inside envelopes, any particular um, appeals uh, that you would like uh, the bishops and the priests of the diocese to be praying for. So I'll, I'll give you a few moments to, to fill that out. Again, echoing Michael's words, I am extraordinarily grateful on behalf of the recipients of your generosity uh, for all your goodness and kindness in this appeal and as you have throughout every other, every other year. And uh, we'll give you a few minutes to fill it out and then you can just put it in the regular offertory basket uh, when that comes by at, at, at collection time. Uh, and again, thank you very much, Michael, for, for being with us this afternoon.
for the church that the faith of its members might be renewed through a deeper encounter with the person of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in public office, that they might uphold the law faithfully and govern wisely, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of this year's annual Catholic Appeal, which supports the charitable works of the Diocese of Bridgeport, that we will be generous in our charity toward the sick, the poor, the homeless, the hungry, and all those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on all families preparing to gather together at this time of year, that they might grow in love and the peace of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world and for the protection of those who defend our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Lily Marie Baraldi, Margaret Hen, and Elizabeth Garland Wozniak, who will be baptized this weekend, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parishioners, members of our families, and friends who are infirm, for the faithful departed, and for Ruth Burns, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Please, pay, please place the annual Catholic appeal and Peter's Pence envelopes along with your regular weekly offering in the collection baskets. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image 
and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and do forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. With mercy in us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Take refuge, let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me, incline your ear to me. Make haste to rescue me. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to save me. Lend your ear and make haste to rescue us. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, Lord God of truth. You hate those who serve worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. Lend me your ear, and make haste to rescue us. I will rejoice and be glad in your mercy once you have seen my misery and gotten to know the distress of my soul. You will not abandon me into enemy hands but will set my feet in a free and open space. And your Make haste to rescue us. 
how great is your goodness, Lord, stored up for those who fear you. You display it for those who trust you in the sight of the children of Adam. Lend your ear and make haste to rescue us. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound by you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. There are just a couple of announcements. The Religious Education Office is closed for summer break until August 16th. Families of students in grades one through eight may continue to register online over the summer. Registrations will be processed in the order received when the office reopens. The St. Thomas More Music Ministry is delighted to invite parishioners and area choral singers to join us for Return to Singing, which launches in July. Come together to celebrate and experience the choral art with our guest conductor, Constance Chase, director of the renowned West Point Glee Club. Weekly rehearsals start Wednesday, July 7th at 7.30 p.m. in the Parish Hall, and the festival concludes with a concert on Sunday, August 29th at 3 p.m. And please remember to take a bulletin as you leave today. Again, special thanks to uh, Mike Donahue for speaking like myself at all the masses this weekend. You only had to maybe stay five minutes longer today. We'll be at all the masses this weekend, which will all be five minutes longer. So thank you, Michael, for your willingness to do that. Thank you for your, uh, your generosity. We'll continue to keep each other in our prayers, especially those who are in most need. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Say, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl amongst the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Help us witness to 